our goal is to get a Azure stage to be able to do this. So if I write this Azure stage, this ampersand right there, that means that it is looking at an Azure storage container from Snowflake. So I've given this uh, rights to, to read and write as necessary. And this gives you a lot of power because you can do massively parallel copying and many other advantages. So our target is to create one called Azure Under Stage 2, which doesn't exist yet. So let's do this. And what are the benefits? So the goal is to create this Azure storage account from Snowflake integration and stage. There are these four benefits. You set up the integration once, no longer need to pass credentials. You can use Snowflake RBAC to control access to your storage container. You can use Snowflake's massively parallel copy into statement and instant compute power for bulk loading. And finally, you can remove Azure storage container file uh, loaded after they've been loaded into Snowflake. There's some Snowflake documentation here, and this Elite Mine presentation has been pretty good as well. Uh, you also have access to this in, in the documentation, the script. So prerequisites in Azure, you're going to create a storage container and populate some data in it. You can, and so what we want to do today is uh, we want to list Azure storage container from storage. In Snowflake, we're going to create these three objects, storage integration, file format, and a stage. In Azure, we're going to use Azure Active Directory and Storage Access Control IM to grant us access to this uh, Azure container. Okay, so what we're going to do is create some objects in Snowflake. So we've created sysadmin, play warehouse, movie, and play DB public. Create a storage integration, which helps you authorize Snowflake without hard coding credentials. So to get Azure Tenant ID, we're going to go to the Azure Active Directory Tenant ID. So it, well, if this is the value that I have, but to get the value that you have, we'll go here, Azure, Azure Active Directory Tenant ID. Azure Active Directory and go over here to tenant ID and all you have to do is copy that to clipboard come back over here and then paste it into this value right here you can change these other settings there's storage allowed location I just want to use star for our purposes here you could put specific path paths or um, do storage block locations you can read the storage integration documentation for more info Okay, and we're gonna promote ourselves to account admin. Right now we're a sysadmin, we're gonna promote to account admin since that's needed to create any integration with the outside world. So now as you can see, we're account admin. I'm gonna create the storage integration. And then I'm gonna grant usage to the storage integration back to our lower level role, sysadmin. And, okay, and I'm gonna describe the storage integration that we just created. So here's the details of that storage integration that we had just created. That's our tenant ID. This is the this is the account that, this is the Snowflake account that's going to be visible from your Azure. And we're going to go to this Azure consent URL. So I'm going to go here, copy this and paste this into our browser. Okay, now I've already done it, but you should be, you should get a button and it'll just click accept. There's something about no need, you know, you do not need to click consent for that. Just click accept and that'll give Snowflake uh, your consent to access Azure. So optionally, if you want to verify in Azure, go to Azure Active Directory, Enterprise Application, Snowflake, whatever, that way you will see the Snowflake app right here. As you can see, Snowflake was authorized to access your Azure. You can filter from here if you wanted to. Okay, so this is just optional just to show you that this enterprise application has access to Azure. All right, so now we want to authorize Snowflake and access control IM. So Azure storage account access control I am okay so let's go there 
Azure Storage Account Access Control I am. Azure Storage Account. I'm going to go to the one that we just that we want to create. Um, we're going to call it Snowflake 171A or whatever you have created as yours. And we're going to access control I am. All right. What we want to do is add a role assignment. So we're going to add a role assignment. Let's go back to our notes. So I'm going to add a role assignment and we're going to do storage blob data contributor. Select the row, storage blob data contributor. Now this gives us, this will give Snowflake read write access to Azure. If you only wanted to give reader access, you would select storage blob data reader. So we're gonna give storage blob data contributor, and then we're gonna search for that app, which is gonna be the Snowflake app. There you go. So you're gonna see something like this, mine says, Snowflake packing 0598, yours should be something similar. When you select it, you see that it came down as selected members. And then you can just hit the save button. And you see that it was added to role assignment as a storage blob data contributor. All right. So that's what we did. There's notes over here if you want to follow along. And now we want to de escalate the role back to sysadmin. Right now, we're account M, and now you see we're sysadmin again. So we're going to create a file format. File format makes it easy to re reload files of a certain type. There's more documentation as to where we got it from. This one's going to be CSVs. Um, we call it CSV, but that just means any type of delimiter, like a pipe or, or tab or what have you, gives you a lot of options as to how you want to do um, compression or whatever. So we're going to create this one right here. And then we're gonna create an Azure, then we're gonna create our stage. So our stage is our is a pointer to that integration that we just created. Now here, mine is called Snowflake 171A. So you're gonna replace Snowflake 171A with your storage account, okay? And then you're gonna replace Data Lake with your container, okay? So just to see how it maps back. This is the storage account and the container. The, as you can see, this is the storage account that I have, and this is the container that I have, the data lake, and I put some data, data in here as well. So you're gonna do that. Okay, so that stage was created, so now Let's see if this works. Okay, so we're getting the failure using storage error. This request is not authorized to perform this operation using this permission. Okay, so here's a peculiarity um, that I've seen it that we have seen in Azure. It can take an hour or two for Azure to create the objects necessary for the integration. So uh, just give it an hour or two and then this should work. And because when, when it does work, as you can see from here, you'll see something like this. So we're gonna pause this for an hour or two and then try it again and see if it works. 